6.4, number 18. Here we have a pretty large trinomial, or large coefficients anyways, and we want to factor it. So the first thing you want to do is look for the greatest common factor to try to make this a little bit nicer to use the trinomial factoring. So each of these, the 120, the 50, and the minus 125, um, have a factor of 5. So let's pull that out. They also each have an x squared, and that's the most we can pull out. So let's pull out the x squared, and we're left with 5x squared times 24x squared plus 10x minus 25. Now for the trinomial factoring, if we're going to do trial and error, let's take a look at the different factors of 24 that we might want to use. So we have 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, and then we get 6 times 4 and we start repeating, so we don't need any more. And for the 25, we have 1 times 25 and 5 times 5. And if we're going to do tr the trial and error method here, there's a lot of stuff to try. Because not only do we have all these combinations to try, we have to think about reversing the orders of the factors. We also have um, the issue here that this is a negative, which means our binomials are going to have two different signs in them in order to multiply and give a negative for the last term. So we're also going to have to consider trading places of the minus sign. So that's quite a bit of trial and error. So I'm going to do a shortcut to the trial and error method. And I'll also do it out by grouping after, because if you, if you really don't get this one by trial and error, grouping is the best way to go. So let's look at a trial and error shortcut. And what I do for the shortcut is I first notice that this is a minus sign at the end. So the middle terms, or the factors for the last term, are going to be opposite signs to give a minus. That means the middle terms, when they combine, are going to be different signs. They're going to tend to cancel each other out. So the middle terms are going to have a, a difference. of. 10. And it's going to be a positive 10 difference. And the next thing I do is I look and set it up. And let's take the um, different factors of the first term. 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. And then I just line up and compare it to the factors of 25, because once they're in the binomial, the factors of 24 are going to be multiplying onto the factors of 25. And I want them to give a difference of a middle term 10. So the difference shouldn't be that large. And that's why I'm not going to go and use the 1 times 25. I'm going to be comparing it to the 5 times 5 to start with. Um, because of the size of the middle term, I think that I don't want to use the largest kind of factor that exists for the um, 25. So then we look and see, well, if we multiply the pieces as they would in a binomial, one of the factors of 24 hits one of the factors of 25. Well, that's going to be a huge number, whatever it is. It's huge, and its difference with 5 is not going to be 10. So that one's not going to work. And then trade the order. Well, the two fives are the same, so we're going to get the exact same result. So if the two fives, if it was five times one or something and they were different, I would then want to say, whoops, scratch that. I would want the 25 to hit the other one, and then this one to cross over. But because they're five times five, same thing, I don't have to do that check for the second um, ordering. So now let's look at two times 12. If the 12 hits a five, I get a 60. If the 2 hits the 5, I get a 10. That's not the correct difference of 10. So those two don't work. 8 times 5 is 40. 3 times 5 is 15. That's not a difference of 10. 6 times 5 is 30. 4 times 5 is 20. That worked. That gave me the correct difference of 10. So I'm just going to get another sheet here. So what that means is that I want to have the 4 and the 6 factors, and the 5 and the 5 factors. So what I've got now, here's that GCF that we pulled out at the beginning. Now we have our binomial factoring. 
And for 24, we want 4x and 6x. And we know we're going to have opposite signs because the sign of the last term has to be negative. And then I've got the 5 and the 5 to put in. And then the question is, who goes with the, which one goes with the minus sign? If I want the difference to be a positive 10, I want the 30 to be the one that's positive. So the 6 multiplying on the 5 has to be positive. So that works out well. And then the 4 multiplying on the 5 is going to be negative. And then you double check it just to make sure it gives the right factoring. That would be 24x squared minus 20x plus 30x is plus 10x minus 25, and it works. So that's a shortcut that I remember learning way back when I first learned how to do the uh, trinomial factoring. And it works pretty well if you get the hang of it. If that doesn't really make sense, then let's take the same problem and do it by grouping instead. So this is still 6.4 number 18. And let's go ahead and just start with the GCF already factored. 24x squared plus 10x minus 25. And now we're going to want to go through the steps of factoring by grouping. So the first step <coughs> is we want to find factors of the first times the last. So 24 times 25. I'll just punch that out and I get 24 times 25 minus 600. So factors of minus 600 that sum to the middle term of plus 10. So because it's a minus 600, I know I'm going to have a plus times a minus for the factors. And because they sum to a positive 10, the plus factor is larger. So let's start listing out the factors. And again, a nice orderly way to list them and make sure that you're not missing any, because then you will be able to identify if you have a non-factorable trinomial, is to just start with 1 times your number. So minus 1 times 600. All right, I'm making the larger factor larger so that I can get my positive 10 middle. Then I have minus 2 times 300, minus 3 times 200, minus 4 times 150. Now we're looking for these guys to add up to be a 10. So they're getting closer and closer together. Their difference is getting smaller, but we've got a ways to go. So I'm going to skip some stuff and just hop right to minus 10 times 60. All right, well, there are 50. So let's skip to the 20 and see what happens. Minus 20 times 30. And they are 10 away. So they sum to plus 10. So that's the one we want to use. So let's go ahead and rewrite the middle term using the factors we found. So that's step two. So we have our GCF hanging on the outside. And we have 24x squared. Break up the plus 10x into minus 20x plus 30x. And then take away 25. Step three, do the grouping. Group those two and those two. And let's go ahead and factor. 5x squared just hangs on the outside. And I get, from here, let's pull out 4x times 6x minus 5 plus, and here we can pull out 5, left over 6x minus 5. 5x squared, pull out 6x minus 5. 4x plus 5 are the leftovers, and we've got our answer using a different approach. So definitely use the grouping method if you don't like the trial and error.